In this video, you're going to be learning how to perform meshing of an aircraft wing airfoil with flaps and slats deployed. So if you guys look at an airfoil, it is simply an aircraft wing cross section and you can define a bunch of parameters for it, such as the max thickness, the max camber, the mean camber line, the cord line, the cord, the front edge and the back edge. If you want to learn more about the basics of how an airfoil works, I do recommend you check out the link in the description below. So the basics of an airfoil once again, if you break up an aircraft wing, it obviously has flaps, slats and a spoiler. Here in this picture, you can see the Boeing 777-200ER landing and you can see the flaps being deployed at the back and the slats being deployed in the front. For our simulation, we'll be using a NACA airfoil. NACA stands for National Advisory Committee of Aeronautics. They were previously known as NACA and now it is NASA. So in this case, we'll be using the NACA 2412 airfoil where the thickness ratio is 0.12, the last two numbers. The cordwise position of the maximum camber along the length is about 0.4, so about 40% down. And the maximum camber ratio is 0.02. This stuff you have to like practice on your own to get a hang of. So I do recommend you spend some time learning about NACA airfoils if you're interested in knowing what these numbers mean. Let's begin the simulation and the meshing. Okay guys, we can start and the first thing you want to do is download the geometry. In my case, I'm using the NACA 2412. So go into airfoiltools.com and select the airfoil that you want to use. I also have the card length as 100 millimeters in this case and you can use this depending on what your design requires. Next, you can press plot, because when you do that, it'll actually plot the airfoil within the internet, and then you can save a CSV file, as you can see here. So CSV file is basically an Excel file with columns for X, Y, and Z points. Save that into Excel, and then open it in Excel itself. And when you're done, you can simply copy the airfoil surface, as you can see here. Copy all the X and the Y points, into a new sheet and then add a column for the Z points. So when you add a column for the Z, it has to be zeros everywhere because in our simulation, the geometry will be two dimensional. So Z must be zero and we will only have valid X and Y points. When you're done this, you can save it as a notepad file, but instead of using a text file, we'll be using a tab delimited text file. First, you have to open the air file file the notepad file and delete the last row because this, this can cause issues within some CAD software. It has to be just the numbers and no spaces. So in my case, I'm opening SolidWorks and then I'm creating a new sketch. So here I have a new part. Just create a new sketch like any normal method and then go on insert curve XYZ points. Now those XYZ points are the notepad points which correspond to the NACA 2412 airfoil. So you want to import that. In my case, I have it saved as airfoil 2 and you can see how it's being imported here. Then you can create a new sketch on the front plane because the points were imported on the front plane. And when that's done, you simply convert entities. Now, every single CAD software has a feature called convert entities, where you simply draw over the top of a curve, which has been defined. When you do this, you will notice at the back edge, you have two points which are spaced apart and you want to join them by using a simple straight line. Next, you have to create the flap and the slat geometry. So in this case, I have my slats and flaps, but the flaps are being pitched more down than the slats, right? Because that's how airplanes work. The slats are not pitched down as much as the flaps. So in this case, I have a card length of my slats of about 20 millimeters. And I believe I have about 25 for the flaps. So the flaps are a bit longer, which is the case if you see in an actual airplane. Set the pitch angle to about 15 degrees for the slats and about 25 for the slat. Copy and paste the new sketch. And for this sketch, you will create the slat geometry first, which goes at the front. So you simply make a line from the airfoil edge to the front edge and then you have to create a different line which goes from the front edge to the top and the spacing of this line in the x direction should be the same as the slat we're basically cutting out a cross section to make that into a slat 
and because the whole idea is that the slats actually come out from the front of the wing itself so they both should have the same curvature you trim all the other edges and then move the slat down and adjust it when you adjust it make sure that the edges are tangent to each other because that's how we need the slats to be and that's what will create a lot of aerodynamic lift and minimize drag then you can complete the geometry as I do here but for this case you can use any geometry you want I'm just trying to complete it in a manner that looks aerodynamic but this can be up to you so I'm going to go a little fast do the same for the flaps you trim an edge and you cut the surface out and then you move it down and angle it as well make sure you angle it such that the flap angle is more pitched down than the slat and this is very important because that's how you want lift to be generated when you're done the flap you can actually trim the edge there as well and you can also import the boundary so the boundary will be created ourselves. and for this case I'm assuming a circular inlet but this can be up to you you can also have a square but I do recommend using a circular inlet just because it is easier to create a structured mesh on that so when you're done go on insert surface planer and that'll be the geometry so for the meshing you want to use ANSYS obviously Dragon Fluid Flow Fluent set the geometry to 2D and then import that file so right click and import the 2D CAD file which you created open geometry hit generate and then you will have the sketch when you're done you simply go on to XY plane which is the front plane and then make a new sketch and then just create four lines now these four lines must be done in such a way that they split up the flap the, the actual wing and the slat so when you dimension these lines they must be dimensioned with the same chord length as you did for the flap and the slat because you want the edges to line up so here I have four lines and I'm setting the dimensions here as H1, H2 and so on so this is very simple to do and it's simply sketching you know just like any other CAD software when you create those lines you can fine tune it a bit also for the, for the, the flap edge I'm making a separate line to break up the airfoil there so you can add another face and the whole idea of this is to create a face mesh now a structured mesh can be done on some parts so when you create the face split you simply go on tools and face split but first make sure that your geometry is finalized when you do the face split select the target face as the face and the tool geometry will, will be that line so just use the line filter and then select that line do this multiple times for every face and at the end of it you will just have a bunch of faces now this process is very simple so when you're done you can also go to the slat and then create a separate split you want to make a line which joins the slat edges from the front to the back and then dimension that line properly and if and I would recommend you have your geometry drawing as well so you can easily look at the dimensions and you don't need to waste time you know switching between software when you do this you can also create a last face split on that specific face which will break up the slat and the flap next you start meshing so let's create a normal mesh and see what that looks like set the sizing which you wish and you will have a decent mesh but this can be definitely improved now the whole, the whole idea is to try and create as many structured mesh faces as possible and to do this you have to go on to mesh control and then create a face mesh okay so go on mesh control face meshing and just click every single face each time and this will tell ANSYS to attempt to create a structured mesh and if you don't know what a structured mesh is it is simply a mesh with defined XY points it looks a lot more neat it's a lot more accurate and it can save simulation time in the long run I have a dedicated videos which show you in exact detail how to create a structured mesh so I do recommend you watch those too when you're done and when you hit generate you will see that ANSYS does not create a structured mesh everywhere because some phases is just not possible but that's fine and next we can add sizing so go into mesh control and sizing you see how I made my video I just applied sizing everywhere and this can be used very simply you simply define the number of points and the bias but bias is how much density you want so if you have a bias of 10 and a skewness of like you know small to big that means that you will have a lot of points in one area and the points will density will 
gradually drop as you approach the other edge. So the mesh itself is done. Um, the final mesh looks like this. It is quite decent and we do have structured meshing which means that the simulation time will be a lot faster than if you used an unstructured mesh. If you want to improve this mesh, like I said, make the sizing smaller, you know, use a bigger geometry if you want, or also you can try and use inflation. Let's try and also run a quick simulation, you know, just for the sake of it. So when we do a simulation, you simply, it's going to be a CFD simulation. So the first thing I'm doing is creating my name selection, the far field and the wall. I just have two name selections. One is the boundary of the whole domain and one is just the air file, the flap and the slack wall. When that's done, I'm using viscous model in my simulation. Density is ideal gas, change create, you know, just uh, points like that, boundary conditions from far field. I have a mark of about 0.29 or something. So, you know, just do this normally. I have many videos on CFD simulation, which, you know, detail the process. So I do recommend you also watch that. Just run a normal simulation and when you're done, you can see the results look quite good. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned something new about airfoil simulations and computational fluid dynamics or CFD. If you guys are new to my channel, I welcome you. My name is Vinayak and this is VD Engineering. The goal of this channel is to focus on aerospace engineering concepts, simulations and tutorials. I focus on aviation science, rocket propulsion, MATLAB simulation, Simulink and ANSYS. The goal of this channel is to spread the knowledge of aerospace engineering, mainly because it is a very cool industry to work in. And a lot of engineers are passionate about aerospace and I have the same passion. So I, I wish to spread that around the world. If you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments below. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.